there's an affordable housing crisis here like there is everywhere in America. And so Salt Lake City passed an ADU ordinance. Previously, ADUs were only allowed in multifamily zones that allowed duplexes and triplexes. And so they overhauled the ordinance to allow for ADUs in single family homes. So overnight, every single family home in the city was allowed to have a backyard guest home or ADU. You can attach an ADU to the house, you can convert a garage, you can place it, uh, our unit that we'll see up here as a detached ADU in the backyard. A lot of times we see customers putting up a fence and it really feels totally detached from the rest of their backyard. And so they can still use their backyard like they were before, but now we've got a, uh, a unit that's being used for something that they didn't have before. So it doesn't mean that you're sacrificing the whole backyard necessarily. This is built using a technique called volumetric modular construction, meaning the entire unit is constructed off-site. There's, there's really, the only thing that's done off-site is the foundation and the utility connections. And so the whole unit's complete when it arrives. It rolls in on a flatbed truck and a big crane sets up in the street and picks it and, and pulls it over the house pretty fun to watch on install day this crane come in and bring it all the way over the house and drop it down it happens surprisingly quickly this one's a little bit farther than some and the farther the reach the larger the crane that we need and it can get pricey but if you were to site build something like this it is difficult you've got to hire architects and contractors you've got to process permits at the city and so those things draw out construction projects. You've got contractors coming through your backyard all year long and dragging mud everywhere and it gets messy. Right, so that's the other benefit of modular construction is that the site work probably took about two weeks. Then the unit was dropped in in a day and will take another couple of weeks to do the touch-ups and it's, it's over. So this is sitting on a concrete foundation. Pretty typical. This is a stand standing seam metal exterior, it's really, really durable. So can you talk a little bit about how this might look when it arrives? So this unit will come, we'll strap everything down, right? All of the appliances have straps so they're not opening and being damaged during transport. It's fairly common uh, in modular construction to see little cracks in the drywall because this unit is shipped down the road for sometimes over a thousand miles. <laughs> and so we'll come in and we'll touch those things up. Um, but really everything that you see here is here when the unit arrives. Uh, we have to hook up the utilities, right? But that's a, we've designed that to be a plug and play really quick. So come, coming into the bathroom, there's a little access hatch under here to hook up the utilities. It takes less than an hour and you're good to go. So the idea behind the bathroom design is that it feels like a larger nice bathroom in a single family home. And so we, we've got a decent sized shower here and standard sized toilet. We fit a stacked washer dryer and there's some storage space as well. You can see this has a built in storage around uh, what's actually a Murphy bed here. But when you've got a small space like this, we want it to provide enough storage and then still plenty of space for people to do what they want with the space. And then you can see this Murphy bed would pull up and this can turn into a table. Tiny homes do mean different things to different people, right? You see tiny homes on wheels that are very compact, sometimes sub 150 square feet, and they're beyond efficient, right? You're sleeping on top of the refrigerator. Sometimes you're, you're maximizing every square inch. There you go. Wow. Use this as a table or desk, and these are the kind of things that we need to do with the small, efficient space that's a different type. This is a permanent improvement to real estate. It's sitting on a permanent foundation, but it is a small, more efficient living space. It's almost like a detached apartment unit. I mean, it's certainly things have come so far from park model homes. Yes. The history of manufactured housing is really interesting. It's spurred by 
the Department of Housing and Urban Development, HUD, which was trying to address affordable housing decades ago. And so they rolled out HUD code. And in response to that, manufactured housing was born. And HUD code is a lower, when you think of trailer park homes or manufactured homes that are often rural areas, that's what we're talking about. And that was critical during that time to address affordable housing. Now we're almost seeing a return to that, but an expansion of the design options and the type of homes that are being built offsite. So we, we balance, building in the factory, we're limited, right? So we can't change the floor plan. There are certain aspects of the design that we, we're not gonna be able to change, but we offer certain options and upgrades. And so built-in storage and a Murphy bed is one of those options. This unit didn't have it, but in the living room, we, we have some extra storage, uh, a day bed, bench. This is an upgrade as well. This is a, a, a barn door, which gives us a little more of a luxurious feel. And this, this is one of three models we offer. So this is a one bedroom. We also have a smaller 350 square foot studio uh, and a two bedroom. Why go for this two room feel? Like why not? There, mm -hmm. you know, there's so many different variations you can do yeah. with a small space. Why this layout? Yeah, so in, in modular construction, we are constrained by how units are built in the factory and by how they're shipped. So this unit is 13 and a half feet wide. That's really about as wide as we can go from a shipping perspective without a double oversized load and a much more intensive shipping. So we've got a number of options and upgrades, but they are limited to finishes and basic things, uh, not so much really substantive changes. Because in a factory, they have a certain blueprint they follow. Yes, so to gain the efficiency of building in a factory, the more the units are the same, the more efficiency we'll gain in the factory. There's, there's less room for error, and the factory is able to streamline their process around a particular design. You know, in the United States, less than 1% of construction is modular. In Japan, it's nearly 20%. The idea behind prefab modular construction is that it's like building a car, right? You would never have sheet metal and glass and components shipped to your house and construct the car on site. That's really inefficient, right? And so because we're able to order in bulk, we're able to get the cost down below what a site built product would be. And we gain a lot of efficiencies by building in the factory. This is a cedar, and it's, it's really a design feature. We, we lose a little bit of square footage, right, by doing this, but it's beautiful. And these, these units are in your backyard, and so there's a compromise of so many, uh, nearly 70% of our customers are investors. This is an investment or a rental property. But that doesn't mean they don't care about how it looks and feels in their backyard. This unit is a one bedroom and it starts at $119,000. They're not cheap, but they are, you know, our customers are renting these for often between $2,000 and $3,000 a month. And so as an investment, it makes a lot of sense. Or we have customers who have uh, family members, aging parents that are living back here. And as an alternative to assisted living facility, it's quite affordable or we have parents who have children going to college and, and they need a place to stay. And so the, the uses are all over the map. So it's really flexible, you know. And that's the idea is, is so many people have backyard space and it's unused, right? And so we're able to use the space in a little bit more of an efficient way.